as part of investing their equity in a transaction, um, by definition, that makes the management team shareholders. So it's very important that management um, have their equity treated the same way and receive the same rights as a private equity sponsor. And typically the fundamental rule is that the management team should be able to monetize their investment on the same terms and at the same time as the private equity sponsor. So if the private equity sponsor is going to sell to a private investor, uh, third party, then the management team should be able to sell. If there's going to be a public offering in which the private equity sponsor gets to register part of their shares, you know, then the management team should be able to receive uh, the opportunity to register the same pro rata portion of their shares. Um, they should uh, ensure, depending on the structure, that if they're going to be a phantom tax uh, liability, that there's going to be uh, associated with their equity that they get the tax distributions necessary to pay their taxes. They're going to want certain information rights that allows them um, to have access to the books and records of the company to the extent they're no longer with the company and don't have that access as a result of being a management holder. So typically, um, senior management receives an employment agreement in connection with these acquisitions as well. And the most important thing that I think that the management team should be aware of is twofold. One, you're looking for what rights you can secure. And two, you want to minimize the obligations that you're conferring to the private equity sponsor. So starting with the obligations that you're going to be bound by, the first thing that you want to do is try to narrow the scope of any post-employment restrictive covenants that you have. Your ability to earn a livelihood by working in a competitive industry, um, soliciting or continuing to do business with your pre-existing relationships. Um, oftentimes you're going to be bound by some form of those covenants, but what you want to make sure of is that you negotiate the scope of those to be as limited as possible. In terms of the benefits, you really want to make sure that you get the benefit of your bargain, which means that if you're signing up and you expect to be the CEO of the business, that that's clearly delineated, that you have your reporting relationship also clearly delineated, that you have your scopes and, scope and responsibilities delineated, delineated as well as your compensation. And then to the extent that any of those rights that you've negotiated for are breached, meaning that the company no longer honors those, I think one of the most important provisions that an executive could have is the opportunity to resign for good reason in the event that the company does breach their obligations and then collect you know, whatever the pre-negotiated severance is in connection with that resignation.